Good morning. See this big, broad smile on my face? You know why it's there? Many of you do. I've had quite an experience since last Friday, and it'll end at noon today. I'll tell you, all of you wives, if your husband doesn't appreciate you, I've got the solution. I can enrich your marriage right now. Just leave a couple of days and be sure you leave the children behind. Can you imagine what it's like on Sunday morning? Getting Brad, giving his bath, feeding him his breakfast, getting him dressed, in addition to all the things I need to do. So Carlene had a, a motive behind it. She knows that when she comes home that she's not going to be taken for granted again. That it's been a great experience. Brad and I have bonded a little together, and it's been a good experience all the while, but I wouldn't want it to be beyond noon today. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Uh, there's so much flu around. I've talked to three or four just within the last few days, said I won't be at church Sunday because of the flu. So we are aware of those who are absent this morning because of flu and other causes. I'm a lapel watcher. Now, some people are bird watchers. My wife is a bird watcher. She has binoculars at her kitchen window and a bird feeder hanging under the holly tree. And occasionally she'll come excitedly into the room saying she'd spotted a new bird she hadn't seen before. I'm a lapel watcher. One of the first things I do when I meet a new person is to look at the lapel. It tells you an awfully lot about that person. It's a bit of the autobiography laid open to read. We had a visitor came to our church. He had a Sunday school pin on his lapel with a chain of bars that hung from it. Told me immediately where his priorities were. Jay Gaddis changes his pens weekly, I believe. He has one that says he's a lifetime member of Methodist men. He has another one that has a jar with a handle on either side, no words, but I know immediately he's a Gideon. And in the fall, he wears a football pin from UT. Castro wears a pin in his lapel that's all kinds of colors and shapes. And I've never understood it, but I know that for those who do, it tells them that he's a Mason and that he's been the Grand Master of the Lodge for the state. And for how many years? It says so much just in that pen on his lapel. Jim Franks wears a Kiwanis pen. Tells us that he hadn't missed a meeting for 30 years or so. Perfect attendance that he's had just about every major office that Kiwanis can give him. You can tell so much about the pins that we wear in our lapels. Hal Ballard dreams of the day that he has a silver beaver. That's the highest award that Boy Scouts can give to an adult. But of all the pins that we see worn in our lapels, by far the most to be seen are little crosses. Silver crosses, gold crosses, jeweled crosses. Says that that person wearing that cross is a follower of Christ. A beautiful symbol. But I propose a new symbol for the disciples of Christ. I propose instead of a cross, there be a miniature towel that one wears in the lapel. And here's why. The day before Jesus died, he was with his disciples in a room that they had set apart to eat the Passover meal. He said to his disciples, you call me teacher and you're exactly right. I'm going to teach you something. They had all come in off the dusty roads. They wore sandals. Their feet were dirty. 
an evidence of hospitality at the time in which Jesus lived was that when you came into the home of another person, immediately they offered you a basin of water and a towel to wash your feet. If they had servants in the home, the servants would wash your feet. If they had a number of servants in the home, the lowliest servant was the one to wash the feet because it wasn't a pleasant task at all. It was a humble task. And Jesus and his disciples had come together to celebrate the highest holy day of the Jewish faith. And there was no one there to wash their feet. The disciples knew that. It would have been so easy for any one of them to have said, let me wash the feet of the others. But to do that would say, I'm a servant. Perhaps they were too fearful of being put in a position secondary to the others. Because over in the corner, James and John were talking about which one of them got to sit on the right hand of Jesus when he proclaimed his kingship. They were thinking of high places, not low places. And then Jesus did a very strange thing. It was he who walked over and picked up the basin of water laid off his outer robe and picked up a towel and knelt down and started washing the feet of his disciples. Peter was appalled. You won't wash my feet. But Jesus said, I must wash your feet. And he knelt down and washed the feet of Peter and the others. And when he had finished, he said, I have set an example for you to follow. The example was immediately taken by those present. Jesus was saying, I did not come for you to minister to me. I came as a servant of God to do for you. And now you are my disciples. And you are to go out into the world and you are to complete what I began. Don't go out filled with pride and stand in high places. Don't emulate the Pharisees who want to be seen and heard. But you be the servant. Always be aware that you're God's servant. So there's the towel. And that's why it's so important. The cross is what Jesus did. The towel is what we do. And if we build our lives upon what Jesus did, ignoring our place, then we have failed him. We have misunderstood what he has called us to do. We aren't really his disciples until we pick up the towel and use it. Lloyd Douglas wrote a popular novel a few years ago based upon the robe that Jesus wore at the time of his crucifixion. When they took the robe from the shoulders of Jesus, the soldiers cast lots for it. And in the imagination of Lloyd Douglas, he wove a tale of the Roman centurion Marcellus who won the toss who won the robe, and he showed in his imagination how the possession of that robe changed his life and everyone who came in contact with it. It's an imaginative thing to wonder what happened to the robe that Jesus wore. That fact wasn't missed in the early Christians. During medieval times, when the great cathedrals of Europe were built, it was necessary before a cathedral could be built that a relic be placed there in the cornerstone. I visited the cathedral at Cologne and knew that as I stood there in that great cathedral, that interred in that cathedral were supposedly the bones of the three wise men who came to the birth of Jesus. In the cathedrals all over Europe there are purportedly pieces of the cross, nails that were driven into his hand, thorns that laced his forehead, bones of the saints. There had to be a relic. But I have never seen mention made of the towel that Jesus used. 
It passed into oblivion that night. The towel was never mentioned again as we revere all the other elements of the passion. So I lift up the towel and I place it in your hands. Nothing is a greater symbol of who we are to be, nor what Christ has called us to do, than the towel. The towel is a symbol of discipleship. It reflects this. It reflects that we have been washed. You don't use a towel until you've washed, and then you use the towel Jesus didn't get down and wipe the dusty feet of his disciples. First, he washed their feet, and their feet were clean, and only then did he use the towel. We try to use so many expressions to relate what takes place in our lives when we encounter Christ and we surrender ourselves to him. One of the more prevalent phrases is to say that we are born again the more sophisticated we become, we talk about it as conversion or renewal. Other words can be used, but possibly the most familiar are the words to be born again. And yet that doesn't really say the same thing to all of us. We think differently. It's hard to think of being born again in a spiritual reality as opposed to a physical reality. But let me tell you what is easy to understand and comprehend. To be washed clean. Let's substitute that. Instead of, I was born again, simply say, I was washed clean. For that's exactly what happens when we become a disciple of Christ. Our sins are washed out of our being. Sins that have accumulated by the nature of our birth. Sins that have built up by the actions that we have followed. All become sinful. None of us remains sinless. Only Christ could do that. And in that moment of encounter, our sins are washed away. Literally, God no longer sees them. They become invisible to him. That's the good news. We are not held accountable, no matter how grievous our sins might have been. When we're washed, they're gone. Our guilt is washed. Many times we perceive that God forgives us, but we can't forgive ourselves. And so many carry guilt in their lives years beyond the event because we can't turn loose of the fact that though we made mistakes, that God has forgiven us and now we must forgive ourselves. The guilt is washed and we no longer have to bear guilt for the things that we've done. It's as though it never happened. But if we are to be faithful to the teachings of our Lord, note this too. Our nature is washed. Our language is cleaned up. Our thoughts are made more pure. Our hearts are warmed. We no longer want to do the things that displease God. And we're more likely to take on the admonition, I do not want to be saying anything or doing anything or to be found in any manner that would be embarrassing if Christ were to walk into my presence in that moment. For to follow Christ is to walk in his steps and follow his example. Doesn't hurt any time to ask, is this what Jesus would do? Is this what Jesus would say if he were here instead of me? So the towel symbolizes our being washed. For once we're washed, then the towel is used. It's a symbol of discipleship because the towel is of a utility nature and not a decorative nature. Too many Christians like to go on display to be seen, to reflect within themselves what they want people to see and know. That was what was wrong with the Pharisees. They put themselves on display, didn't do things at all that needed to be done. Jesus constantly reminded them that they weren't doing the things 
that they had been called to do, but they were going about letting people see how holy they were. Christians were never meant to be put on display. They were meant to do. I'm never fully comfortable when I'm in the home of my hosts and dinner is about to be served and they send me to wash my hands in the bathroom and there are the towels, those big thirsty towels that shows use and then those beautiful delicate lace towels that hang beside the basin, untouched. Now when my hands are dripping, I'm not sure what to do. I know those guest towels are supposedly put there for me as a guest, but I always wonder, does my hostess know that? Did she put them there to look pretty and would I mess them up to use them? I'm a coward and more likely than not, I'll catch the corner of a towel that's been used and I'll dry my hands there and then walk innocently into the dining room. The Christians were not meant to be put on display. They meant to be used. And when we pick up the towel, that means that we become used and not just simply hang there to be admired. Christians aren't to be admired by appearance. Christians are to be admired for what they do, who they have become. So here's the towel. The towel is the ideal symbol of the follower of Christ because the towel tells us two things that Jesus taught that night. He taught us that we are to be humble. It's hard to be humble because we want to take pride in who we are and what we become. But humility is not a state of being. Humility is an attitude we don't have to appear humble in nature to feel humble in view of who God is and who we are. So we don't have to abate or abase ourselves. I've said before, there's one line in one of our hymns that I never sing when the songwriter said, for such a worm as I, God never meant for us to call ourselves worms. That's false humility, not true humility. True humility is not feeling like a worm. A true humility is feeling like a son of God, unworthy but forgiven. Christ taught us to be humble and throughout his ministry, he played upon that theme if you wonder if he ever preached the same sermon twice, yes, he did. He preached on humility. Told one day about two men who went into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and one was a publican. Anyone meeting those two at the door of the temple, they would have smiled warmly at the Pharisee and they would have moved out of the way of the publican unless his shadow fell upon them. The Pharisee was admired, the publican was hated. And the two walked into the temple and took their places there in the temple facing God. And the Pharisee lifted his face upward so God could take a good look and know for sure who it was. And he began to tell God what a great fellow he was. And thanked to God that he wasn't like that poor publican standing over there who was so worthless. But the publican standing over to the side wouldn't raise his face. He couldn't look God in the eye, but his heart was filled with need and longing. And he whispered so God could hear, but no one else, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. And Jesus asked the direct question, which one did God honor? And he said, we're not to be proud. We're to be humble. And when we carry the towel, it is a mark of our humility. Rufus Jones told about a little girl who lived in Maine. It was during the Depression. Most people were wanting. Her family wanted for nothing. They were quite wealthy. And her mother sent her to the store one day to buy something. And in making conversation, the storekeeper said, well, are your hens laying well these days? 
remembering that most families brought in eggs to buy merchandise. And the little girl piped up, they could, but we're wealthy and they don't have to. False humility. Pride. That is false or still. Well, there's the towel. It calls us to humility, but it calls us to service after that. The final use of the towel is to do the scrubbing, to do the work. Jesus called us to complete what he began, not simply to cherish what he's done for us. The cross is what Christ did. The towel is what we do we won't be sent to the cross, but we will be sent out into the world with a towel. And it is an imperative that we carry the towel and that we use it. What we do with the towel shows how faithful we are to the one who called us to be his servants. One of the great religious novels of generations ago was the novel Quo Vadis, the story of Peter. Peter is coming to the end of his life and he's living in Rome, but now the persecution has begun and the Christians are being arrested and they are being thrown into the arena and being burned alive. And most of the Christians are walking straight toward their destinies rather than deny their Lord. But Peter has a wavering moment in the story. He convinces himself that he will be a lot more worth to Christ alive than dead. And so he decides that he will leave the city and he will flee for his safety. And when it's safe, he'll come back out again. But it's far more important that he stand on his principles, stand up to his convictions. It's more important that he die than live. Jesus had the choice. He walked to the cross. Peter had the choice, and he slunk out into the forest, escaping the city. And as he walked through the forest, he saw a figure approaching, and he stopped for a moment because it looked like a familiar figure. And as he drew closer, suddenly he realized who it was, and then the line was spoken from which the book got its title, Quo vadis Domini, Whither goest thou, Lord? And he looked up into the face of the one he knew so well, and tears came into his eyes as he said, I go to Rome to be crucified again. We are called to do, and when we don't, it is Christ who suffers. And so the towel is placed in your hand. A little girl and her mother were walking through a museum. And they came to the statue of Jesus, so familiar to us all, with outstretched arms and hands. The woman who dusted the statuary had been by just shortly before, and in dusting it, she had taken the dust cloth and draped it over the arm of the outstretched arm. And the little girl, seeing the arm draped with a cloth, grabbed her mother's arm and said, look, mother, quick, look, Jesus is handing us her towel. That's it. That's what it all means. Jesus washes us, and then he hands us the towel. And that's Christian discipleship. And now this. Take the cross out of your lapel and get the facsimile of a towel and put it in its place. And then the world will know that you're not just living on what he did, but you're living on what he told you to do. Amen.